I was reading a story at the time, about halfway through the news program, and all of a sudden I felt inside like I was melting. But then I said to my co-anchor, Linda Schmidt, I said, Schmidt, I, 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 there's something wrong with me. You're going to have to finish the program yourself. And I was getting a little dizzy. So I, I walked off the set, I went to the men's room, and all of a sudden, blood just started gushing out of me. The EMS guys came from New York Presbyterian. So John Rowland came through the emergency room after having a massive lower GI bleed, basically hemorrhaging from his lower intestine, and went right to the intensive care unit. That was the point where I saw him, and he was very ill at the time. His blood pressure was unstable, and we decided that we'd try and stop the bleeding through an endoscopic technique called colonoscopy. Um, but we had no time to think, no time to consult with, with any other doctors that we did know. We ended up with two of the top doctors in, in the world in their respective fields. We actually did not find a source. In fact, at that point in time, he had stopped bleeding. But we knew it was such a massive hemorrhage that the chance was that he could bleed again, and we had to prepare for that. And that's when I called Dr. Milsom and said that we're going to have to work together, because if Mr. Rowland were to start bleeding again, this would require probably a operating room intervention. And based on the information that Dr. Pochapin had supplied to me, I knew that he needed an operation. So I acquainted myself with him literally outside the operating room door. I cannot explain what it's like to anybody who hasn't been there, what it's like to think that you're, that, that you're going to die. And I thought I was going to die. He was ashen, white, extremely worried, yet uh, based on my understanding of what his problem was and the fact that this is the kind of problem that you know I have to take care of routinely, I knew he was going to be okay. But putting myself in his position, this is a scary moment. Until, and I, I have to be honest with you, until Dr. Milsom said, uh, you, you got to fight with me, you know, we're gone dancing, you got to fight. At that moment, I sort of changed my, my thinking. I thought, okay, I, I'm not going to die. I am going to fight. And I believe that that's really what, uh, what turned things around. We try to, you know, bring home a human touch to the patient. You're going to, you know, you're going to be okay, John. We're going to take care of you. We're going dancing after this. And here I was alone in a waiting room in a hospital, not knowing, cl clutching onto the ring that they had cut off John's finger, not knowing whether or not I would ever see him again. So. I just find it amazing that there was a, somehow a collection of people like that was put together, all to take care of me. <laughs> that's the way I felt at the time. This place is just for me. I mean, that's how comfortable I felt. And that's how, that's how concentrated the effort was to, to save my life. He really got the same level of care that anybody would have gotten coming through emergency room. And I think that speaks a lot of the way we take care of our patients here. If I'd been anywhere else but where I was, the circumstances would not have been the same. If I'd gone to any other hospital, I don't believe the circumstances would have been the same. There has to have been a reason why I was where I was and when the hospital I was taken to was New York Presbyterian and the doctors that, I, that worked on me were available. Whatever those reasons are, that's a very precious situation for me, one that I will never ever forget and I will, I will never be able to thank New York Presbyterian Hospital and the people there enough to enable me to walk on the beach again and enjoy uh, another sunny day.